you are with me. Good morning and happy Sabbath, family. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning and happy Sabbath, family. Good morning and happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody rejoicing and glad this morning to be in the house of the Lord? We're going to invite you to stand in the presence of the Lord as we get ready to enter into worship. Did anybody come to worship? I said, did anybody come to worship? Did anybody come to glorify and to magnify the Lord's name? Amen. The word says in Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 1, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and true to us. The reason, family, we come to worship today is to exalt the name of our God. The reason why we come today is to praise the name of our God. Why should we praise his name? Because he is Jehovah Jireh. He is a God who sees and a God who provides. Why should we praise his name? Because he is Jehovah Tiskanu. He is the Lord who is our righteousness. Why should we praise his name? Because he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the God who heals. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and we should worship him for that. But not only should we worship him for who he is, but we should worship him for the things that he has done. The word says that he has done wonderful things. Everybody say wonderful things. What wonderful things has he done? He woke us up this morning and clothed us in our right mind. He put breath down in our lungs. He started us on our way. He put food and shelter and clothing on our backs. The Lord has protected us from danger seen and unseen. And yet he saw fit in all of this to bring salvation to us through his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross, who stretched out his arms wide, who hung his head and died. And then he rose from the grave after three days because he loved us so much. It is the reason why we should worship because we serve a savior, not a dead savior, not a sleeping savior, but a risen savior that is in the world today. I don't care what men may say 
because he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. And because God is all of these things, we should lift our voices. We didn't come to be entertained. We didn't come to watch. But instead, we came to worship. So everything that we do in this house, as we sing, we go worship. As we pray, we go worship. As we take up the offering, we go worship. And when the word goes forth, we go worship. Why? Because our God is worthy of our worship. Come on, put your hands together this morning as we pray. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that your presence would come and fill this house and fill this temple today as we have come to worship and to glorify you. 
you are the everlasting father and your son is the prince of peace and lord he upon his uh, shoulders will the government be standing oh god we have come this morning lord to worship our savior to worship him because he has saved us from our sins and father we have come to worship you because you are sovereign god and so lord we ask for the power of the holy ghost and the train of your glory to come and to fill this house and to bless everything that we do we give you the permission to add and subtract from this service oh god we give you the permission to take over to heal and to deliver to anoint oh god and to save in this place but we want you to speak to our hearts so that when we leave this place we can leave rejoicing and shouting and even singing that we have heard the voice of God and he has spoke to us this day. We'll be careful to give you the thanks, the praise, the honor, the glory for everything that you will do and how you will do it is our prayer in Jesus name and for his name's sake. Amen and amen. You may be seated at this moment and time. Good morning, family. I said good morning, family and a happy Sabbath. I want you to go ahead and just turn to the person next to you. Just touch them this morning and tell them, listen, neighbor, I'm so glad to see you this morning. This morning, I am glad to be here to welcome you to our worship experience. And standing next to me is this fine young lady. What's your name, fine young lady? Give us your whole name, Emma. Emma Latrice Dean. <laughs> amen, amen. Can we take an opportunity to welcome her this morning? Everybody say, welcome, Emma. Listen, we are glad that you are here with us this morning and are here for the worship experience. Those of you, I see that there are several individuals that are worshiping from other churches. I see uh, Sister Cloretta with us this morning. Amen. From Beacon Light. I see Elder and Sister Brown with us this morning from Beacon Light. I see Sister Teresa Freeman from Bethel this morning. And I don't think they just came to worship now. I think that they came to support. Everybody say support. Support because today is a special day. It is our Women's History Sabbath. Everybody say Women's History talk to you a little bit more about that later women's history sabbath but uh bringing our word today is going to be sister jamie charles somebody say amen, amen. so those of you worshiping online there's still time for you to run on down and get in the house because it's going to be a powerful word later on the day emma tell us how how are you doing how's been how was your week my week's been pretty good pretty short in my opinion what would you say was the highlight of your week? Probably swimming. What do you like about swimming? I just get to enjoy being under the water and just gliding through. Hey Amen. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. That's a good week. So if I was to ask you to rate your week on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give it? An 8. An 8. Ah, that's pretty good. I got any 8s in the house? Anybody would say they're an 8 in the house? Okay, okay. We want you to tell us in the thread, those of you worshiping with us this morning, how your week was. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say my week was a nine. I'm going to give my week a nine. Man, the Lord was good this, to me this week. The Lord was really good this week. Lord allowed us to get some projects done around the church here. We're going to talk to you a little later on about this that, that process. Had the opportunity um, to, to work through the process and, and disciple some people this week. Preach the word of God for uh, Anna Minas funeral yesterday. Had an opportunity to preach virtually last night in Miami. And uh, I, w I didn't go to Miami, but virtually I was there. And we had a wonderful time in the Lord. So it has been an amazing week. 
Listen, family, we are so glad that you have joined us today. So there's a couple things that we want you to do for us. Number one, we want to remind you to like, share, and subscribe. We're so thankful for those that have been participating in our ministry. We are two, subscri or two subscribers away from hitting a thousand. Somebody say amen. That means at least a thousand individuals know what's going on with our ministry, and we're thankful for that. We also want you to take the time to dialogue with us in the chat today and to put your prayer request in. A little later in service today, uh, Sister Bobby Rice is going to lead us in prayer, and so we want to pray over your needs. Go ahead and do that. And then today, we're also super excited that we've got something happening for our children and our youth. Somebody say amen. We will have Children's Church and Youth Church a little later on in service that will be right, uh, right before we go into praise and worship. Now, Emma, you've got a word to share with the people today to encourage them before we greet, right? What's that word? Um, the word is basically to enjoy the little things that you have going on in your life, like getting plenty of sleep or just appreciating that you have food to eat and a place to sleep. So just enjoy the little things and it will help get through life a lot easier. That means enjoy the little things. Somebody say enjoy the little things. Amen, amen. Pastor man and man family, we're glad to see you in the house this morning. Just saw Sister Aquanita Russo walk through the door this morning. We're glad that you're here. So on, on behalf of our first lady, she is not with us. Nordy is not with us today. She's preaching in Philly, probably as we're worshiping here. So remember her in your prayers. On behalf of our pastoral staff this morning, we want to welcome you to the greater worship experience. We are glad glad that you are here. Let's stand and greet somebody in the name of the Lord and let them know that we love them and God loves them as well. We're glad that Sister Doris Donnelly is in the house one more time leading us in worship along with our praise team. Happy Sabbath, everybody.
together amen it's prayer time everybody it's what time it's prayer time and how many of you know that prayer changes things and so today we're going to have a special prayer and that prayer time is going to be brought to us by sister bobby rice we're going to invite sister bobby to come and here's what we want to do today we want to invite you all to come on down to the altar Particularly our women today, we want to invite you all to come down to the altar because we want to pray for you because prayer changes things. Y'all believe that? Sister Bobby, thank you for being here today. And uh, the time is yours to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. I know, I know we're celebrating the month of Women History Month. You know, and when I, I, I say that, it came to mind the women that I have met through Linwood. I thought about Sister Ruth. I thought about the many times we, uh, during her illness, uh, we would go and um, sit with her on Sabbath. And she would have us watch the Ten Commandments or Jesus of Nazareth. And, and she would sit there and she would weep. And she would just always say, baby Jesus, baby Jesus. I remember that. I remember how Amos and Eula took such good care of her. And I think about Sister West. She was such a mentor to me. Late nights, we would have long talks. And I thought about Granny. <laughs> We've had talks. <laughs> and I just thought about my mom. A woman with a sixth grade education, but she, I didn't realize until she was gone how much she had taught me uh, to be a woman. Now, you know, I know Brother Avery is a man, but Brother Avery was my dad. He was my dad, along with Brenda's dad. So I, you think about women history, and I just thought about all the different women in my life, even now, that God has given me such a village of ladies. And I just recently told Deanne we were sitting for lunch, and we were sitting at a table of ladies, and I was looking at each one of them and I said, you know, Deanne, we need to write a book because each one of us have a chapter. Each one of us have a chapter and how God have just placed women in your life to help write your story, your book, that chapter. And so this morning, along with us praying for Miss Jamie, Jamie, you got it. I know, Lord, I, I, I know that she's been in conversation with you all week. <laughs> but you got this, honey. And so we're so honored that you have the willing spirit to get before us. Because sometimes we can get most fearful before our own. Don't worry about us. Don't worry about us. God got you. But I, we're going to be praying this morning for some of our members. 
that are dealing with grief. Anna Miner's family, they just laid uh, Anna to rest yesterday. And what I leave with Terrence and his brother and the rest of the family is something that my mom left with me, the scripture, Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. So this morning we'll be praying for Anna family. We're going to be praying for Juanice and the rest of the family, uh, for Silva Buford. Uh, we're going to be praying and healing for Cheryl Bosby, Josephine Washington. I see her son here today, Jimmy. We're going to be praying for Juanita, Markel, Jay Faulkner, Grandma Perkins. I think that's Morticia's grandmother, if I'm right. And we're going to be still praying for Vicki. That's Latoya's daughter. And we're going to be praying for Dessa Pettiford and for our own first lady that is uh, giving the message today out of town. Lift her up in prayer because we know that they're going to be blessed. And we're going to be praying for Princess Pettigrew. So at this time, just bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, <laughs> you're the God that sees his children in their wilderness. You're the God that sees not only us women that are lioness and queens and we are the Adam rib. You see all of us. You see us as in our brokenness, in our loneliness, in our pain and in our grief. You in the very air that we breathe. Lord, you give us the breath every morning to wake up and survey the house. Lord, even if we're by ourselves, to get up and give you all praise and bow on our knees and tell you we're so grateful to have you in our life. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for how you woo us, especially as women, how you woo us, Lord, to love you, to move in our hearts, Lord, and to live and show kindness to all. Only you, Lord, can give us a kind heart when we have been mistreated, when we've been downtrodden, when we have been looked up on, not as a, your child. Only you, Lord, put our hearts back together and forgive. Only you, Lord, have that power. God, often people, you use people with very simple faith to accomplish great purposes for you. And when I think about that statement, I thought about Rahab. <laughs> I thought about her because she had to be courageous. Lord, as she hid the spies. <laughs> Lord, she had to have, have an open mind to go against her people. To know that this might have been an assignment from God of what she was doing. Lord, and she hung that crimson cord. And she did even more than that, Lord. She wasn't just trying to save herself. She hung that to save her family as well. And that's what we do as women. The many crimson cords we hang. Lord, to save our children, to save our families, to save our men in our life, not just our spouses, the people in our neighborhood, the people we meet at church, Lord. It's an awesome task for us, lady, but Lord, you've given us the courage and the power to do it. So as we do this, Lord, we got to empty ourselves of being judgmental and jealous and worried about the just little stuff, Lord, because we got a bigger war to fight than that. So, Lord, I pray not only for our women here today, I pray for those ladies that are over there in the war zones, Lord, that are seeing their kids die, that are dealing with some things that we haven't even encountered, Father. And they might not even know the Lord. So, Lord, we're going to pray on their behalf because we do. 
we're going to ask the Lord to just stop this right now. It makes no sense. I know you said there was going to be wars, but this war don't just don't make sense. That kids got to die and people got to get killed, you know. So, Father, we're just lifting them up, Lord, that you will save them. Even if they got to die, Lord, let them know about you before that happened, that, that you are a great God and that you are a kind God and that it, no, it's hard to believe that you're kind, but you really are if we just hold on. So, Father, I just thank you so much for giving me the opportunity, Lord, to stand before your people to just tell them, trust them, hold on to them. This is not the end. We got a little ways to go. You got to keep holding on. It's going to be worth it, I think. I think it's going to be worth it. So, Lord, thank you for the man that you put before us, our pastor, Lord. <laughs> you gave us a pastor. You gave us one, Lord, that will run to the last for you. And he's willing to fight for his people, for us to come to know you. So thank you, Lord, for him. In the name of Jesus, I ask it all. Amen. afternoon my church family how was your week I saw a smile and that's all I needed thank you Coyla I needed that we don't know what people need sometimes it's a it's as simple as a smile I'm here to celebrate life and we did have a funeral on yesterday but it just reminded me of life life comes before that Life comes before that. We celebrate life with birthdays. And on last Wednesday, we didn't get to tell Doris Donnelly happy birthday. So we say happy birthday, Doris. Wave your hand. Happy birthday. <laughs> that was on the 13th. But on Tuesday of this past week, Pastor Latoya Hazel Alcide had a birthday, and she celebrated, yes. Happy birthday, Pastor LaToya. And on Wednesday, the 20th, Yurik Hunt had a birthday. And I know Yurik is here. He is here. Happy birthday, Yurik. Somebody tell him we'll, that we said happy birthday. Um, Jarvis Spriggs had a birthday on Wednesday, the 20th. Happy birthday, Jarvis. And on Thursday, the 21st, Larry Moore Jr. had a birthday. That's Shauna's son. He had a birthday. Happy birthday, Larry. Sabbath birthdays today. Shania Doss. I don't know if Shania's here today. She's out of town. Okay, please tell her happy birthday for us, would you? Thank you. And Simone Wells has a birthday today. Happy birthday, Simone. She has a Sabbath birthday. I'm going to take care of my housekeeping first. I have a first reading for transfer of membership from Linwood to the Nashville Riverside SDA Church in Nashville, Tennessee for Pastor Karsten Rogers. And that is a first reading. We have no action that's needed today. As usual, I'd like to ask Oh, I will remind that the child, it's time for the children to go up to Children's Church if there are any other children in the audience. No? Oh, okay. Okay, we're good. Thank you. I try to ask you every week if something impacted your week. I'd like for you to think about it. You don't need to tell me what it is, but something significant. Hopefully it was good. It might not have been. 
but it impacted your week. And I hope you were able to glean something positive from it, even at that. My thoughts were all over the place this week. We had Wednesday fasting and prayer, and a lot of that was based around relationships. The one that stood out to me was the relationship between Jonathan and David. And I had to pull out Samuel and read it all over again just to see how tight their relationship really was. It was amazing. We're, and this morning I get here, we're talking about relationships all over again through women, the relationships of women. Last year, the theme for Women's Month, Women's History Month, was celebrating women who tell our stories. Wow. With that theme, I know it's last year. Jamie, I salute you for just telling our story, for being brave enough to come up here and tell us our story. So my thought to all of you, male, female, it was mentioned that we could write a book. We could. But those words are tangible. I hope that I can, I hope that you can, write that story just by living your life. Live your story. Have a happy Sabbath. Good morning, church family. It's that time when all of us can participate. It's time for the collection of the tithe and offering. As I was thinking what I wanted to say to you this morning, I came across uh, Mark chapter 12 verses 41 to 44. And Jesus was in the temple. The part was the treasury where they were picking up collecting the tithes and the offerings and there were a lot of rich people and they gave a lot of money but Jesus uh, pointed out a lady to his disciples all she had was two farth farthings they call it, just a very little amount of money and that was all she had to her name she had no more money. But do you know what she did with it? She put it in the offering plate. And Jesus said to his disciples, this woman gave more than any other of those people, those wealthy people, because she sacrificially gave all that she had. And I felt emboldened to talk to those of us who have very little. Many times we excuse ourselves because we say the Lord will understand because I have to feed my family, I have to pay my rent, I have to pay my utility bills. But I believe when we sacrificially give God first what belongs to him, he's gonna bless the little that we have left. So I want to challenge those of us who don't have very much, those of us who are living off a fixed income, to put God to the test and to give him what belongs to him and see how he's going to bless. I want to also appeal to those of us who are blessed with more. It says here in Luke 12, verse 48, to whom much is given, much will be required. So I'm saying, if God blesses us, give him what is his before we give ourselves what we want. Also, I want to say that giving is a part of worship, and giving should be inspired by our love for Jesus. Pastor wanted me to remind you that this month we have $15,740 that
that's needed for this month. And the loose orphan goes toward benevolence fund or the poor and needy fund. So I'm asking that you will give generously today to support the cause of God. Let's pray. Will the deacons come to re receive the tithe and offering, please? Oh, never mind, just a second. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful that you have brought us into your house of worship on today. We are thankful for those who are watching online, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. Please lead and guide us and direct our paths, Father, and give us the strength to work so that we can provide for ourselves and our family. Bless us, Lord, we pray, and save us when you come. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And pastor will come up to give the announcements now. Thank you so much, Elder Fatoma. A good afternoon to the church family again. Those of you that just slipped into worship, we're glad that you're here. Won't you just touch the person next to you and say, I'm glad that you're in the house today. Listen, as the announcements, uh, uh, as, as, as we get ready for our announcement period of time, uh, Elder Eula was talking to us just a little bit about the need for that $15,740 that is for our operating expense. And we are also encouraging you to give toward church improvement. Give toward what, everybody? Church improvement. So we're working on a project, getting ready to renovate our bathrooms, but we were blessed this week to be able to um, do another uh, renovation project, and that is on the second floor of our educational wing. And uh, we put in a new floor for our children's ministries and our Sabbath school and other ministries, amen, so that we can use that space and that space can look a little bit better. So I want you to, uh, to see what we were able to accomplish this week. Tech team. Happy Sabbath family. We are excited about what God is doing here at Linwood and uh, with our new project. So I just want to take the time to show everybody this morning uh, what we voted for in board and business session and uh, the new floor that we have laid down in the educational wing of our building for our children's ministry and for them. So I'm going to take you all on upstairs and have you have a little look around the day you'll see that the floors have been replaced in this area. You will see there are new hardwood floors all throughout. Some of you all will remember what these floors previously looked like, but you see what it looks like this morning. What a blessing. Uh, we wanna take an opportunity to say a special thank you to Pastor Hackle and his team for doing this work for us. And uh, this is just the beginning, y'all. Uh, we're planning to do even greater things. And so we are thankful again. This project has been done and we are able to improve the building of God's house for the Lord's cause. God bless your family and thank you for supporting this project. Does it look good? I said, does it look good? So there's more to come. Just touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're going to do greater. Amen. Amen. And so we want to encourage you to continue to give toward this cause and to support uh, this project. Uh, family, just a couple other announcements for you. Elder, uh, Brother Willie, if you would turn the lights back up for me. Thank you so much. I uh, just want to remind you or recap with you on this past Wednesday, or before I move there, I'll go back for a moment, just a moment for me. So I want to take a moment to say this is Pastor Hackle uh, to my, to the right in the picture, to our left in the picture is Pastor Jonathan Fields, two of our pastors within the Central States Conference, and in the middle is Pastor Hackle's son. And those two, those three men came in and two days and laid that floor for us. 
So we are eternally grateful for what they have done. Amen? On this past Wednesday, everybody say Wednesday, we had our day of fasting and prayer where we prayed for greater living. We prayed for greater living through the Holy Spirit to be pure in heart, to be peacemakers, to make peace with God, to make peace with others, to learn to make peace with our, our world. We spent some time in praying about greater living through persecution and then being the salt and the light of the world. We had a wonderful time and we believe that prayer changes things. Somebody say amen. So we want to encourage you to join us for our next day of prayer and fasting on April the 17th. And we are looking for more participation. The amount of people that we see in church for worship is the amount of people we want on our knees and praying with us when we have our day of fasting and prayer. Because God will do the impossible for us and the miraculous if we do. I want to encourage you after we have finished this series of greater living, now to take what we have preached about and prayed about and go live. Don't let us forget what that series has done for us. On tomorrow, everybody say tomorrow. Tomorrow is our Central States Conference Family Like Life Singles Ministry Brunch. It is going to be held at Sanzetti's Italian Restaurant from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you're planning on going and you're able to give some of our members a ride, would you please let us know that? We're getting ready to start a new quarter for Sabbath school, amen? And as we get ready to get into this new lesson, uh, we're going to invite you to pick up your Sabbath school materials today in the educational wing. If you got any questions, you can see Sister Terry Tapp. On next Sabbath, everybody say next Sabbath. Next Sabbath, we will be having a foot washing and communion Sabbath. I'm going to ask that you prepare your hearts accordingly this week. A foot washing will begin at 1030 and the Lord's Supper at 1130 a.m. And then on next Sunday, we are going to be having our Easter in the Park program from 2 to 4 p.m. at Loose Park. Now listen, y'all, some of you all might ask about why are we doing an Easter program. We're not a, be a believer in, in Easter from the standpoint of Easter bunnies and egg hunts and those different type of things. But it is an opportunity for us to be relevant and to reach people. We believe that as a church. And so we want to be salt and light every day, particularly when people's hearts are open to the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. So we're going to have some activities for the family. We'll have some activities for the children. And we want to invite you all to come out. On the first Sabbath of April, we're going to be having our pastor's wife appreciation. We want to show Sister Nordia that we love her and that we appreciate her. Are we thankful for her ministry? Can somebody say amen? amen. And so we're going to ask that you would bring cards and gifts and those type of things to show our first lady that we love her and appreciate her. That will be done during the worship experience. And then a piece of sad news on yesterday. Uh, we uh, funeralized Sister Anna Minor. We had a wonderful time in the house. God did show up and show out and gave us a word. Unfortunately, we're going to be having another funeral this coming week, or this coming Friday, and that is for our dearly beloved sister, Sybil Buford. Um, she passed away. This is uh, Sister Juanice's mom, uh, Joel Middleton's mom. Uh, she passed away earlier this week, and the funeral is going to be held here at Linwood. The wake will be at 10 a.m., and the funeral will be at 11.15 a.m. Would you please come out and support our family during this time? Remember, let's also take the opportunity to reach out uh, to Sister Wadis and let her know we're thinking about her. It's difficult, y'all. It's difficult to lose a loved one. Today, as I have shared with you, it is our Women's History Sabbath. And Women's History Month is an annual observance to highlight the contributions of women to events in history and contemporary society. Women's History Month is celebrated during March in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Australia, corresponding with the International Women's Day that occurs in this month as well. And so we take the opportunity to remember that as we stand here, we stand on the shoulders 
of our women. Somebody say amen. Our women have done some great things in society. And we want to remember our leaders such as Susan B. Anthony, such as Sojourner Truth and Lucy Storm and Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Canny Stanton and Harriet Tubman and Alice Paul and the list goes on and on. And so we thought it would be fitting today in Women's History Month to have a focus speaker from one of our women. And I am thankful today to say that that speaker is our own women's ministry leader of that of Sister Jamie Renee Charles. Can y'all put your hands together for her? Just a little bit about Jamie. She is a devoted resident of Kansas City, Missouri, sharing her life with her husband, Stephen Charles, who's in the house today. Steve, would you wave your hand? And their daughter, Madison Charles. Would you wave your hand? And uh, growing up within the Adventist faith, Jamie embraced his teachings with a young, at a young age and has since found a deep sense of belonging with her local church community, considering its members as her extended family. Over the past decade, Jamie has assumed leadership responsibilities within her faith community, serving as the board chair for V. Lindsay Seventh-day Adventist School. Somebody say amen. She has played a pivotal role in shaping the educational landscape and fostering an environment conducive to learning and growing. Simultaneously, her role as the women's ministry leader at Linwood Boulevard SDA Temple has provided her with a platform to support women in their spiritual journeys. And I want to say, Jamie, we're thankful for all of the work that you have done personally and with your team throughout the years for women's ministry. But above all, Jamie's ultimate goal is to spend eternity in the presence of Jesus Christ. She finds fulfillment in living out her Christian values and shaping the love of God with those around her, striving to make a lasting impression on the, and impact the lives of others as she presses toward her heavenly home. And so the next voice that you're going to hear after we have praise and worship, it's going to be that of our women's ministry leader, Sister Jamie Renee Charles. Will you hear the word of the Lord through her? But, fa but family, before we get to that moment, we came to worship the Lord, did we not? We started with worship, and we are here in this moment to worship our God. Do I have some people that came to worship the Lord? I said, do I have some people that came to worship the Lord? You're thankful for what God has done for you. You're thankful for the blessings of the Lord. You're thankful for how he has kept you. You're thankful for how he has provided for you. You are thankful for the shelter that he has placed over you. How he has kept you from danger seen and unseen. And y'all, I, I feel the spirit of God in this place. Because I want you to understand that this time is not for you to watch these ladies just worship. They're not singing to you. I said they're not singing to you. I said they're not singing to you. But instead, they are ushering us into the presence of God. And I just wish I had some people that are rooted and grounded in the faith, that are rooted and grounded in the love of God, that can stand to their feet, clap their hands, wave their hands, and sing along with the praise team today as we worship the Lord. Praise team, let's worship. Doris, let's worship. Band, we're not just playing, let's worship. It's worship time, everybody. Let's go.
see me okay? I think I'm going to fix that. Hold on just a second. <laughs> How about now? Amen, amen. All right, all right. <laughs> I told you now. So I'm here before you today. Happy Sabbath, everybody. I am so glad to be here with you this afternoon. I am grateful for the opportunity to stand before you today as we celebrate Women's History Month. I, um, after I accepted the request to speak today, I thought to myself, what did I just do? Because um, I've never done this before and so I sat down to start working on my message and to grapple with God about what I would talk about today and I had to ask myself again what in the world have I gotten myself into but as I look over the church today and I see all of my people here and all of the prayers that have gone up and Although my mother is not here today, I have mothers in the house, Sister Teresa Freeman and so many others. I thank God again for the opportunity to stand here before you today. Creating this message was a new challenge for me, and I've learned a lot from this, and I actually enjoyed the process. I've learned that preparing a message is not easy. So kudos to Pastor Eichner, because I only have to do this one time. And he does this every week. Um, I've also learned that for this, for this process, um, I needed a lot of prayer. I had to pray moment by moment to stay focused or my mind was all over the place. I've also learned how to better sit and listen to the Holy Spirit speak to me. I've learned in a mighty way that God's word is a living and breathing thing. I've heard and read the story that I'm going to talk to you about today many times before, but every time I read it for the purposes of this message, something new would pop out every time. We are all mouthpieces of God in many different scenarios, but standing here before you today to give a specific and intentional message feels a lot different than the day-to-day -day interactions we have with each other and with people. 
We should always be a vessel of God, but this feels different. And as we are vessels, we talk to people one-on-one -on -one and we wax eloquent with all of our well-intentioned cliches, the, all those that we have in our arsenal, like when praises go up, amen, amen, or, or God is good all the time and that's right, that's right. And then there is God will not give you more than you can bear. These things are all true, but as I prepared this message, I'm telling you, it all felt different. I had to ask myself, how can I, Jamie Renee Charles, stand before my church, of whom have known me, quite a few have known me, all of my life with all of my shortcomings? Y'all know me, right? What, what, what can I say? What can I say to my family? And then the scripture came to mind, Romans 3.23. Say it with me. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen? That let me off the hook because y'all not perfect either. With all of my imperfections, stay, still praying for deliverance from strongholds, st still a work in progress, feeling victory in some areas and in other areas feeling hopeless. In spite of all of my flaws, God decided to use me as his mouthpiece. So I stand here today only because of his grace. Let's get into the word. Our scripture today will come from Hosea 3, 1 through 3. That was Hosea chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. I will read from the New International Version. Would you please stand? The Lord said to me, go show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and an omer and a half of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will behave the same way toward you. The title of my sermon today is there is no place like home. There is no place like home. Bow your heads. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come before you today humbly, thanking you for all that you've done for me this week and with me this week. Lord, as I give the word that you have given me, I ask, Lord, that you would hide me behind the cross. Let them see you and hear you, not me. I ask that they walk away today different than they were when they came. I ask, Lord, that you would touch that person that this message is specifically for. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. How many of you enjoy traveling? I know I do, and my family does too. When we're going to travel, my husband Steve maps out all of our shopping excursion, excursions. He's the shopper, not me. I get excited about what kind of car we're going to rent and what kind of food we're going to try. And Madison and I get particularly excited about staying in hotels. But even after an excellent trip, be it vacation or business, traveling can get old rather quickly. And within a few days, you're usually ready to be back home because there is something to be said about sleeping in your own bed, eating your own food, taking a relaxing bath, or whatever that thing is that's relaxing to you. Why? Because there is no place like home. In many cases, home is a special place. For me, as I was growing up, home was a place where I could almost always smell something good cooking, mingled with some bleach. If you knew my mother, then you know bleach was a real thing in our house. I can remember the scent of our house, the way our clothes smelled when they came out of the dryer, my warm bed being tucked in, and the love from my parents. 
I remember my dad's matter-of-fact way, his suck it up and drive on attitude, and my mother's kisses. I remember a game that my mother and I used to play. She would try to kiss me, and I would refuse her kisses, and then she would chase me around the house trying to kiss me. I remember her doting care and concern for me and for others. Home was the spot. It was safe. I could be myself, I could let my hair down and, my, and, and be silly, and my mom and dad would oftentimes join in with me. We would sing songs and we would dance. I even remember my mom dancing and my mom and dad dancing, doing the two-step. I remember hanging out with my friends and being able to do and go a lot of places, but at the end of the day, there was no place like home. These things are a part of what equated for home for me. But for some, home may not necessarily be a place, but more a person that brought about warm feelings of love and safety, security, and peace. Whatever home looks like for you, the truth is there is no place like that place. There is no place like home. That being said, sometimes we take home for granted until it is we are away from it or it is taken away from us. We take for granted the comfort and warmth that our homes can bring, the safety that we often feel there. We can easily take for granted the peace that comes from being in our own kitchen, our own bathroom, sitting in our favorite chair or our favorite spot in the house, and oh man, getting in the bed, your own bed, with your own pillows and your own sheets. Can anyone relate? Amen, amen. All of these things we can easily take for granted, but when they are gone, we begin to realize, just like Dorothy did, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There is no place like home. It was the darkest period in Israel's history. It wasn't dark because there was great depression or because the economy was suffering. It wasn't dark because the people were struggling financially or out of work. No, Israel was actually growing and thriving during this time. It was said that during the reign of Jeroboam II, Israel had seen its greatest success and prosperity since the days of Solomon. The label of this time being the darkest period in Israel's history represents the great spiritual decline among God's people. Anarchy, murder, animal worship, sacrificing children, and gross sensuality were the norms of that time. Israel had strayed so far from God, and yet, after his repeated pleading and warning of God's prophets, God's children not only refused to, to stop sinning, but decided to, to dig their heels in. It was the darkest of times. During this time of backsliding, in his mercy, God once again extended an olive branch to his people. To speak to his people, God used the prophet Hosea's marriage to a woman named Gomer. Hosea and Gomer's marriage would, be, would serve as an illustration of God's relationship with his people, Israel then and Israel now, which is you and me. As we spend today chopping it up about the marital life of Hosea and Gomer, there are a couple of things that I need for you to keep in mind. One, Hosea symbolizes God, who is our savior and true husband. Two, Gomer symbolizes Israel, God's people, his bride. So Hosea and Gomer marry, and in time they build a family, having at least one child whose name was Jezreel. For a while, things seem to be okay in their marriage, but Somewhere along the way, Gomer becomes dissatisfied with their relationship. It wasn't enough that Hosea was faithful to her. It wasn't enough that he loved her and took care of her and provided for her. It wasn't enough that they had a family together. Home was not enough. 
Gomer was looking for something more. Even if she didn't know what it was, she was still in search. Because after all, the heart wants what the heart wants, right? The grass looked far greener on the other side. Hosea 2.5 says, she said, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread, my water, my wool, flax, my oil, and my drink. Gomer parts ways with Hosea to go in search of what she thought she was missing. In the end, she would give herself away to other men, other lovers. For while Gomer seems to be good, living a life of comfort and satisfaction as her lovers take care of her. Now, I want you to remember the parallels that I talked about in the story just a little bit earlier. Just a little bit earlier. Hosea represents God our true husband, and Gomer represents God's people, his bride, which is us. Thank you. Just as Gomer left Hosea and home for a better life, can't we say that we've done the same thing? There was a time that our relationship with God was fresh and new. We felt loved, we felt cared for, and comfortable. We could see God's hand working in our life, and Life was good for a while until things started to become familiar and even monotonous. The excitement and newness begins to wear off and the thrill is gone, the honeymoon over. But instead of pouring and investing in our relationship with God, working to rekindle our love, we become dissatisfied with what we have and begin to look outside of our relationship for fulfillment ungrateful and unsatisfied with what we have. We complain and we whine because this walk with God is difficult, it's stressful, it is draining. We look at the other side, which is in the world, and they appear so much happier and fulfilled and successful than we are. So we begin to lust for what the world offers because it's different, it's flashy, it's exciting. It is here in the world that we begin to feel the thrill again. Because the world looks and feels good, we become indifferent to the love and security of home, the blessings and the mercies that God provides us day in and day out. Am I talking to anybody? It is exact, this is exactly how Satan plays us. He gets us to believe his lie that all that glitters is gold and that if it feels good, it is good. He dangles that shiny fruit before our eyes, telling us that if we partake of the fruit of this world, we will not surely die, but instead live life, live our best life. God also did the same for his people as they chased after their lovers, after other nations and other gods, but God protected them from themselves. Can you think of a time where God protected you from yourself? Can you imagine that one time? God did protect them from themselves. Here it is in the word. Therefore, I will hedge up her way with thorns and will build a wall against her so that she cannot find her paths. She will pursue her lovers, but not find them. I will uncover her lewdness, and none of her lovers will stand up for her. That was Hosea 2.6. Notice that last part. Her lewdness will become uncovered, and none of her lovers will stand up for her. Israel, oh Israel, haven't we gotten ourselves out there on a limb while on Satan's playground? We weren't out there when we started out, but at some point we find ourselves dangling alone, looking foolish because we knew better. But even in our foolishness, God closes doors to protect us, desiring that with each closed door, a little more clarity is gained. God shows us the stark truth about how we're living and how jacked up we are. God protects us to draw us back home. I remember a time when I said to God, I want to live and be in control of my own life. I've lived by my parents' rules, and now it's my turn. I got this. 
I left the church for a while out doing my own thing, going to parties and clubs and drinking and smoking some stuff. Um, doing everything I thought I was big and bad enough to do. All the while, though, God inserted touch points of his love to draw me back. I didn't realize it at the time, but in hindsight, I can see it. My mom never stopped praying for me. She never stopped holding me accountable for my poor choices. I remember Sister Diana Black never stopped praying for me and with me. Sometimes she would get with me, and other times it seemed like she had some book that was always speak to where I was in life. There was Sister Allen, Sister Freeman. There were so many people in my life that were praying for me and never stopped. Sister Allen even had my now best friend, Claretta, praying, before me, praying for me before we even knew each other. And what about that saying, train up a child in the way that he should go? I never, never forgot my training. I just ignored it. Haven't you done that? Ignored God's promptings? With each wayward step, God would whisper his teachings and his scriptures, and I would let it go in one ear and out the other. This reminds me of another time when my friends and I decided that we were going to go to a rave. We drank some and got high some and headed out. And while we're at the rave, it was smoky, dimly lit room. The lights were flashing, the bass was booming, and everybody was dancing. I remember opening my eyes and everything was moving in slow motion. Everybody was swaying to the beat of the music and it was kind of like we were all hypnotized. As I looked around the room at the people that were in the room, everybody's faces had become the faces of snakes, fangs and all. I remember being frozen and terrified. I had heard stories about people dying while in Satan's territory. I'd been taught that there were places that God and his angels just did not go. And I found myself in the center of that place. At the time, I believed that I was on my own because there weren't any angels in here. I knew whose camp I was in. It felt like I had been in, stuck in a slow motion movie forever, but at some point everything went back to normal and everybody was dancing and having a good time, so I played along. But after that night, I knew that God was trying to get to me. I knew I was not where I was supposed to be. This incident was God hedging me in. God protected me to draw me back home. Thank the Lord for his protection. Amen. See, as, as God protects, he takes the scales from our eyes so that we can see the truth. The truth is that being at home with God is far better than anything in the world has to offer. Gomer and Israel came to this truth as well. That is why God protected them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was better for me than now. Hosea 2, 7. God protects us to draw us home. Not only does God protect us to draw us home, but God pursues us to draw us back home. God does what? He pursues us to draw us where? God protects us and pursues us. Then the Lord said to me, Hosea, <clears throat> pardon me, go again, love a woman who has loved, who is loved by a lover and has committed adultery. Just like the love, the love of the Lord, just, excuse me, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel who look to other gods and love the raisin cakes of the pagans. Notice that God tells Hosea to go again and love a woman who has loved another. In spite of Gomer cheating, Hosea is to pursue her. In spite of Gomer leaving, Hosea is to pursue her. In spite of Gomer humiliating him, 
Hosea is to pursue her. In spite of Gomer dishonoring and disgracing him, Hosea is to pursue her and bring her back home. In spite of you cheating, God pursues you. In spite of us leaving, God pursues us. In spite of us humiliating him, dishonoring him, disgracing him, God pursues us. Hosea is told to pursue her so that he doesn't lose her. And God pursues his people so that he doesn't lose his people. Thank God that he pursues us. Amen? Amen. So God sends the messenger, the prophet Hosea, to pursue after his people, warning and pleading them to recognize the error of their ways and to turn from their idolatry. God pursues after them because he doesn't want to lose them. This is what it means when God says, Therefore, behold, I will allure her. I will bring her into the desert and speak comfort to her. And it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband and not my master. Hosea 2, 14 and 16. I ask again. Doesn't God still do the same thing for us today? God speaks through his word. He speaks through his pastor. He speaks through our family and our friends to warn us of the dangers ahead and give us the opportunity to come back home. Our Savior is kind enough to use our life situations, the scrapes, the bumps, the bruises, even near-death experiences to steer us in the direction of home. It is in these circumstances, as painful as some of them may be, that God is telling us many times that we need to pump the brakes before we hit that wall of disaster. God pursues us because he doesn't want to lose us. John 6, 39 says, And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of those he has given me. God pursues us to bring us back home. Listen, God not only protects us to draw us back home, not only does he pursue us to bring us back home, there is one more P. God has purchased us to draw us back home. God protects, pursues, and has purchased us. Hosea testifies that he bought Gomer back or redeemed her after she had lived a wild life and was not paying the consequences for her sins and falling into some type of slavery. So Hosea says, and I read again, so I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and one and a half omers of barley. When we, enslaved, when we were enslaved to sin and captured by the entanglements of it, what did Jesus do for us? Jesus came and he bought us back. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as the lamb without blemish and without spot. Jesus redeemed us and bought us with his blood, not for us to remain the same, but for us to be forever changed. Hosea said to his wife, because I have protected you, pursued you, and purchased you, you will not continue to live the way you have, and you will not continue to play the harlot, nor will you have any other man. The ransom of Jesus' blood redeems us and changes us so that we can become new creatures. If any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Gomer back with her husband and Israel back with their God. This is an excellent end to a pretty rocky marriage, right? The marital life of Hosea and Gomer teaches us that after all of our foolishness, we can still come back home. Like Motel 6, 
God always leaves the light on for us. Listen, folks, listen. There is nothing you can do to stop God from loving you. Repeat after me, there is nothing that I can do to stop God from loving me. That's why he protects you, and that's why he's pursuing you. That's why he purchased you, because he wants to draw you back home. Why? Because there is no place like home. I'm going to say it one more time because I think it's important and I want you to, to remember this thing that there is nothing, not one good thing and not a million bad things that you can ever do to stop God from loving you. In fact, Romans 8, 38 and 39 says that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nothing, not anything else in creation will be able to separate you from the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Can you see it now? Can you see the husband that loved us despite of our unfaithfulness to him? Can you see the husband who has adopted us as his own children, born and shaped in iniquity? Can you see the husband who has paid far more sh than shekels to redeem us, who instead shed his blood for us? Can you see the one who allowed himself to be hung high, to be stretched wide, who hung his head and died? That's love. That was for you, and that was for me. Can you see the husband who will be coming back for us to take us home to live with him for eternity? Because there is no place like home. That's why the man Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a home for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be also. Family, Jesus is preparing that home right now. The question is, is there a bride a wife here that will accept her husband's gift and be forever his? Is there a wife that has enough hope that her husband, God, protects her, pursues her, and has purchased her to draw her back home? Is there one? Is there a bride out there that is willing to come back to her first husband, her first love? Is there a bride with an open heart to come back to him? Listen, listen, your husband doesn't ask you to be perfect. He doesn't even ask you to fix yourself before you come. He just wants you to respond to his love. Come back home. If there is a bride out there Please stand with me. If there is a bride out there who wants to come back home, please stand with me. Just come the way you are. Respond to God here and now. Come back home. Even as you're struggling, I invite you to come to the altar. Come back home with your addictions. Come back home with your brokenness. I invite you to come to the altar. Is there anybody in here that struggles with insecurities? Come back home, bring them with you. Is there anybody who feels inadequate? It's okay, come back home. Come back home with your worldliness, with your idolatry. Do you have an unforgiving heart? Get up, bring it, and come back home. Do you struggle with bitterness? Bring it to the altar, just come back home. Because there is no place like home, why? 
Because at home, you will experience Jesus' love. At home, you are safe in his arms. Why? Because at home with Jesus, you can be yourself. At home, you are appreciated. At home, you will experience eternal life. There is no place like home. Won't you come home? Listen to these words. Softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Why should you tarry when Jesus is pleading? Why should you linger and heed not his mercies? Come home, come home. You know you are weary, come home. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Family, we see month after month, week after week, even day after day, that people are being laid to rest, left and right, here today, gone tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Matter of fact, the next hour is not promised to us. You have right now. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. If God is speaking to your heart right now, respond. Come to the altar and lay your burdens down. Come to the altar and say to the Lord, Lord, there is no place like home. And I want to be home with you, Lord. I want to recommit and be reconciled to you. If this is you, step from your pew and join me at the altar. It doesn't matter who, who sees you. It doesn't matter who's watching. They cannot save or condemn you. Focus, focus, focus on coming home. Please come back home. Pastor Agner, I'm inviting you to come and pray with us. You all receive this word today. I said, do you receive the word today? How many of you believe in the house that God protects us so that he can draw us back home? How many of you believe that God pursues us so that he can draw us back home? How many of you believe that God has purchased us so that he can draw us back home? Sister Jamie, thank you for the word. There are a few down here at the altar, but there are more that need to come. Come on right now. There are things that you need to lay down at the altar. Your insecurities, come on. You need to lay your addictions down at the altar, come on. You've got some problems and some issues that you need to lay down at the altar. Come on, y'all. We need to draw ourselves back to God. Malice and hatred and unforgiveness and bitterness, murderous thoughts, adulterous thoughts, lies and idolatry. Come on, y'all. We need to lay these things down at Jesus' feet because he is calling us. And while the time is now, I see you coming, I see you coming. While the time is yet now, today when you hear the Lord's voice, anybody hear the Lord's voice today? While you hear the Lord's voice through your woman servant, harden not your heart, but come to him. Take the hand of the person next to you and let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God for the word today we're thankful Lord for the story of Hosea and Gomer we're thankful Lord for how um, your woman you wouldn't let her go God you pursued her you protected her even when she didn't know Lord what she was doing God you purchased her back because she was your child and you told Hosea not to give up on her. And yet, God, you have done the same thing for us as Israel. We've been an unfaithful people, Lord. We've strayed away and thought that everything outside of you was so much better. That shiny fruit that Satan and, uh, dangles in front of our eyes, God, we've eaten it time and time again, God. But here we are, Lord, standing here today 
saying to you, Father, we want you. We're going to come back home. So we lay all of our stuff on the altar, God. We lay our insecurities on the altar. We lay our brokenness, Lord, on the altar. We lay our addictions, Lord, on the altar. We lay our issues on the altar. Lord, we lay our worldliness on the altar. We lay our pleasures on the altar, our flesh on the altar. Everything that we want, God, we lay it down before you now, Jesus, saying we need you to take it, Lord, and help bring us back home. Lord, we pray that you would wrap your loving arms around us. Give us peace. Wrap your loving arms around us, Lord, and allow you to feel us to feel your presence. Give us security, Lord, and safety in your arms. Thank you for these things that you will do. And now, Lord, we pray for the power of the Holy Ghost as we come to fill us, God, to break every chain, to break every shackle, to cast out every demon, every foe, oh God. And make our lives whiter than snow. There might be somebody under the sound of my voice who has heard this word today. And wants to say, I want to make my calling and my election sure. I want to be baptized here today. I'm ready to come back home. Is there one? Won't you raise your hand right where you are? I need to be baptized. Is there one? Maybe there's somebody here that needs to be rebaptized. I've strayed away and now I've made a decision that I'm going to come back home. Is that you? Won't you raise your hand? Is there one? Maybe there is one that says, I've heard this word today and I want to give my heart to God. I want to know about the lover of my soul today. And I want to understand Jesus just a little bit better. And I want to get involved in Bible studies. Is there one? Won't you raise your hand where you are? Is there one? Is there one? If you are online and you need to make that decision, put baptism or rebaptism or Bible studies in the chat and we will connect with you. Father, thank you for the word that has been received. Now we pray, God, that it will not return unto you void, but find a loving place in our hearts so that we might return home to you. We'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray with the forgiveness of all of our sins. Our people say together, amen and amen, amen. Hug the person next to you and let them know that God loves you. That's why he protects you, he pursues you, and he has purchased you. Amen. The people of God said together, amen. Amen. Were you all blessed by the word, everybody? I said, were you all blessed by the word, everybody? The Lord used Sister Jamie in a mighty way. Sister Jamie, we want to invite you to come back. Sister D. Sister Jamie, we want to invite you as you put your heels back on. We want to thank you for allowing the Lord to use you in a mighty way. We want to thank the Lord for speaking through you today and allowing yourself to be a vessel. I can tell you and testify to the fact that she spent time in the Word and she spent time in the process and I know you can tell that because she was prepared and so on behalf of our church family and one of your committee members Sister Dean, a couple words, a couple words from you. We just want to say we appreciate you, Sister Jamie, as our women's ministry leader and being our women's history speaker today. May God bless you. Can we put our hands together, Sister Dean? All I could do this morning was to give this young lady a hug. I know what it takes. Many times Jamie was ready to just say, oh, I'm tired. 
She never gave up. She never gave up. Am I right, Sister Betty? She can attest to that. She never gave up. So hang in there no matter what you do. We got your back. All right. One more round of applause for Sister Jamie, allowing the Lord to use her. We praise God for her today. Just a couple things for you, family. Immediately following this service, we've got some things for you. First of all, everybody say Sabbath school. Sabbath school materials are available following worship today. And so we want to invite you to go into our educational wing. If you, if you have the ability, I want to invite you while you're going to get those materials and joining us for lunch, just to uh, walk on up the stairs and to be able to see uh, the new wood floor for yourself. The Lord has blessed us in a mighty way. In fact, parents, those of you that have children, we want to ask if you would be so kind immediately following this service to go get your children and don't allow your children to come down by themselves because of safety, right? We know what day and time we live in, amen? All of our ladies, everybody say ladies, all of our ladies that are in the house, we want to ask that you would stay by about five minutes following service. We want to ask all of our ladies not to slip out, but to come up here on stage and we want to take a picture in honor of Women's History Month. And then uh, following that picture, we're having fo fellowship lunch together. Somebody say amen. We've given you the spiritual food. Now we want to give you the physical food. And so we'll be having food downstairs in the fellowship hall, uh, newly renovated, and also in our lounge as well. Sister Coyle, I'm going to invite you to get ready to come. And I got just a couple of things for you. Remind you that on next Sabbath, we will be having foot washing and communion together. 10.30 a.m. for foot washing and then 11.30 a.m. for supper. Next Sunday, Easter in the park. Remember, this coming Friday is the funeral for Sister Buford. The wake is at 10 a.m. The funeral is at 11.15. Let's support all of these events during this time for the growth and the expansion of our church and the comfort and the love for our families that are grieving. We're thankful that Sister Coyle is in the house today. After losing her dear beloved friend of 50 years, but yet she's still standing. And Sister Coyla, I want to say thank you because six years ago on night number two, you came to our Revelation Seminar and gave your heart back to the Lord. But when you came, you didn't come empty handed. You came and got your friends and your family and you brought Sister Anna Minor with you and you brought that lady on into the church. We thank you for being a soul winner. You are one of the icons of women's history. Can we put our hands together for Sister Coyla? She's going to pray us out and also pray over the food and bless it as well. that you're our way maker. We know that you're our Prince of Peace, Father. We ask you to just to allow this worship that we're doing of you today, Father, just to rest our souls, Father. Fill us with the Holy Spirit as we go about your Sabbath day, Lord. Let us bring others to Christ. And Lord, thank you for the word that was given to us today. Lord, I just ask you just to pour all over us, Father. And let us learn from your word, Father. And let us grow in your, friend, in your friendship and in your love, dear Lord. I ask you to please bless the food that we're about to receive. And bless the hands that prepared it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you would be so kind to just please remain seated until the ushers have dismissed you. Remember, ladies, we're taking that photo picture, and we want the entire family to stay for lunch. May God bless you. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a happy Sabbath, everybody. I need to hear a sound in the building. Somebody release a sound in here.